Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. It is June 30th for me still, and I'm picking up where I left off in the last episode. We are just zooming through, doing a whole bunch of stuff on getting the dollars text fields all in place. We've got a whole bunch of fields in here, which is very cool. And um, most of them work, starting balance works, cost basis works, yearly spending kind of works, uh, and kind of doesn't, in that it has the initial value of 695 but changing that doesn't actually change our sales so what we need to do next is um, get that in and we're we're just that's all we have to do is just making it change when the value changes uh, to do that we need to modify our application model to have the ability to set the yearly spending so that's what I'm going to put in I'm going to write a test for that Changing yearly spending should change stock market table model. Okay, now we have to come back to that because stock market table model doesn't have a yearly spending in it. That is easily done. Just following the patterns we've set before. Go ahead and put this up at the top. I wonder if that needs to be a, uh, a zero. Do we have anything hard coded onto that? Let's find out. Yeah, that does. Since I know the code was already correct, I can do this without worrying about breaking things. Okay, there we go. Now for our starting values we can say that the um, yearly spending is going to be the yearly spending. Now that should fail. But is easily fixed, I hope. By looking at our sell orders.
there we go. So that's done, which means we can come back to here. And we don't have a set yearly spending yet, but we will shortly. It's not going to do anything. That test should fail. Hmm, I guess it reset itself. Um, expected 423 was 695. Yep. And that should pass. There we go. So now, application model's done. Now we can bring this in. And this in. And this should fail. Expected 672 was null. Right, because it wasn't called at all. So that's good. And now here, we'll do the same thing we've done everywhere else. Except we'll change this to set yearly spending. And that should pass. Except it didn't. Well, it really should have worked. Why didn't it work? Okay, so is the problem our test or our production code? Looks like it is probably our test, because this is working just fine. Oh, and look at that. All of our happy little dollars text fields are working. Okay, so this code is right, which means this code must be wrong. And that's because we're setting the wrong field. There we go. That should work now. It does. Okay. So there we go. Uh, we've got all of our cost, got all of our um, all of our dex dollars text fields in place, and they are all doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. And that's why our, I, I realize now why um, as our cost basis goes up, our sales change. It's because um, the amount of tax we spend is changing. So. All right, look at that. Hmm. 
Um, right. Oh, I see. We're spending two dollars, so our cost basis is going down by two. Step five, one, three. Yeah. Our sales go up every year because uh, we're spending more tax. All right, um, there we go. That's all good. Well, that uh, that takes care of the dollars text fields. We'll come back and do the rest of the remaining fields next, uh, but those aren't dollars text fields. Those will have to be something else. So that's a bigger job. Uh, the other thing we need to do, let's see, we've done this. We've addressed the duplication. We understand why the first year's sales are changing. Uh, question here, though, is, is why the starting balance field isn't turning red. Uh, honestly, why aren't any of them turning red? We, I know I programmed it to work that way. And it should be turning red. But it's not. And the funny thing is, is that I know it's got tests around it. So let's look into that mixtry now. So yeah, the oldest rendered by domain class when text changes should change color. If we set it to minus 10 like that, it should change color. But it's not. And the strange thing is, is that um, the test is passing. And down here in our render target adapter, set foreground color is is there, and it should be working. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. I think I think they'll have to wait for next time though because uh, I've done a lot of videos today. We've got um, made really good progress uh, in in every other respect, which is to say that um, these remaining fields popped in really nicely and easily, and they are all showing up with values like they should. So that's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. The uh, glitches that we're seeing, well, we'll just have to come back to that. So I think that's it for today. Uh, I'm going to, you'll see me again on the next, next time, but uh, this is the last time I'm going to record for the next month or so. So thanks everybody for watching, and I will catch you next time.